This is a PPM measuring tool. It literally tells you how much stuff is in your water. This is purified drinking water processed by reverse osmosis and distillation. As you can see, we got a super low reading on our meter here. This water is nearly naked. Check out the difference just one twist of my salt shaker makes in the content. So the question is, what's taking place when you're drinking nearly naked water and is it a problem? Let there be light in my bedroom. If I say define hydration, 95% of folks are saying it's when your body has enough water. And that's an okay definition, but the other 5% of folks who are answering that question differently, they know a little bit something that we don't, and that's probably gonna lead to them having more confidence in their water choice. But I promise this video is not about being right or wrong about definitions or semantics. It's just time to understand something about hydration that we never really knew. Yes, water is 60% of your body. Yes, we can go without food for many days, but you can't go without water. You gon' die, you gon' die. Anyone who talks about water on the internet has to start off with these facts, but it's important because it helps us give context to the fact that water is vital, indestructible, sustaining. Is water wet? Huh? Is water wet? We're not, we're not doing this. Water Fatigue, headaches, dark urine, dry lips, dry eyes, and something else that's a little bit more sinister that we're gonna talk about. This takes place when you're dehydrated. But also, what the heck is an electrolyte? What difference does your water choice make? We're going deep into the water talk today. I hope you brought your snorkels. I, just, I knew he was gonna say something cheesy. You couldn't think of any other water. In this last video, we talked about when spring water spouts out from the earth. That's kind of like Earth's way of saying, here, drink this. Spring water is kind of this naturally ripe water. The earth has filtered and seasoned it with minerals. Why are these so important for hydration? To answer that, we have to understand the concept of fluid balance. I was curious in the making of this video. I asked when we drink water, where does it go? The answer was a lot harder to pin down than I thought. You see, water balance, it's just that in the body. It's, it's a balancing act. And when you're trying to balance something, there's always these minor acute readjustments. It's constantly balancing between intracellular and extracellular water. Let's zoom in here. Let's say these are the cells of your pancreas. Johnny, why the pancreas? Because the pancreas just doesn't get enough recognition and love. Comment below, I love my pancreas, but only if you actually love your pancreas. I expect at least one comment. But truthfully, this can be any cell. It could be the cell of your liver, the cell of your muscle, the cell of anything. Let's put a blood vessel here. So we have intracellular fluid, fluid inside the cells, makes up about 40% of your body weight, and we have extracellular fluid, fluid outside the cells, intraprefix meaning inside and extra meaning outside, super easy to remember that way. Extracellular fluid of the blood vessels is about 5% of body weight, and the fluid running in between it all is about 15% of body weight. Water follows stuff. My professor back in college wrote that and only that on a chalkboard in big bold letters and out of all of the acronyms and phrases and words I had to remember for college, this one stuck with me. Shout out Mr. G. The defining property of water is that it likes to combine with stuff. It's clingy. We established that solute, it's stuff, right? These minerals that are ready to be dissolved. Water is the solvent, the liquid that dissolves said solute. And the solution is the final mix. I believe this is the simplest way to understand hydration because the body is constantly trying to get to this so-called solution state. This, this final mix of water and minerals inside and outside of cells. This is called cellular isotonicity. I mean, you're good with that. I mean, leave a like on your way out, but if you leave now, you'll still be in the 95% of people that don't quite get hydration. And that's just too many people. On a macro level, we can assist in the making of a solution by stirring. But our cells don't have hands or little cellular sized spoons for that matter. So how does water mix itself in the body? Osmosis. Osmosis is essentially the law behind water following stuff or solute. So if you take that pancreas cell we were talking about, you have water and solute inside of it, and you also have water and solute outside of it. Water passively goes to fill the space of where solute is heavily concentrated. Follow me here. Water does not like when there's too much of a concentration of a solute. It's gonna come over and try to space some stuff out. Okay, now we gotta zoom out because you act just like a water molecule and you didn't even know it. No one knows each other on the first day of class. You walk in and sit somewhere to ensure there isn't too high of a concentration of people in one spot. You end up with this final mix that everyone prefers equally spaced out. Spacing out isn't only human nature, it's also water nature. Other than the fact that water doesn't go to school. That's not his best joke. But I hope this video still deserves a like. Uh, I actually have something super cool coming up for you. How I achieved worry-free hydration. Keep checking. Spring water gets its ingredients through soil. Calcium, chlorine, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. All right, I gotta get up.
Some are more present than others. They all vary. The reason it's such a big deal in water talk is because they don't come with some of the complex food molecules that can affect their ability to be absorbed. I don't know that's kind of weird, but think of a keychain with a bunch of rings. Let's say you have to take one off for some reason, you'd experience just a tad bit more difficulty than if the key was just free. In water, minerals are just free, unattached to anything. And the body can't produce these minerals on its own, so we call these essential. And just like vitamins have a function, minerals have functions as well, but we're not really talking function. But it is important to understand that when minerals go into the body, they have a preference for where they want to be. That leads us to two electrolytes, and we have to understand those in order to understand hydration. I'm gonna to explain electrolytes how I wish they were explained to me because all I heard was that they were electronically charged minerals. I don't know what that means. Okay, from the top, every mineral we speak of is just an ingredient from the periodic table. You know, that collection of all the elements that make the earth and its inhabitants. The simplest way to put it is that minerals are known as minerals until they are dissolved in the body's water. Then they are known as electrolytes. Fancy. But when we use the term electrolytes, we're specifically talking about minerals that influence fluid balance. The driving principle of electrolytes is that where they go, water wants to follow. It wants to cling to them. Water follows stuff. I'm turning it to Mr. D, aren't I? Calcium, chloride, and sodium like to hang out in the extracellular fluid. Magnesium, potassium, and phosphate like to hang out inside of the cells. Again, kind of like human nature. Some of us naturally like being in the house. Some of us go outside to make YouTube videos under a tree. Purified water is what we call a hypotonic solution, meaning that its concentration of solutes is much lower than the body's concentration of solutes. So if we intake this nearly naked water, it's going to want to find some solute, and there is solute in our cells, so what happens is when we intake it, it rushes into our cells, and they literally start to swell, capturing what this looks like under a microscope. Now, this looks pretty violent. This cell literally just exploded. Can drinking purified water actually hurt us? This review states that there are two things we gotta understand about cells. Number one, the walls of cells, the membrane. It's permeable, meaning water is going in and out, period. Number two, they can't do anything about it. So the cell is subject to this sometimes a violent shift of water going through its housing because of this difference in solute in the intracellular and extracellular water. It kind of reminds me of people who are scared to merge onto a busy expressway. They go from a very slow, calm environment to a fast one just like that. And truthfully, they can't adapt. It just kind of freaks them out a little bit. That review expresses that these changes in solute concentration are damaging to the animal cell, which in general also means they're speaking of human cells because they act the same. They didn't spend a lot of time talking about, well, well, humans specifically though. So what else we got? This review actually dives deep into osmosis, particularly osmotic stress defined by when we have these great differences in solute in and out of the cell. They mentioned this rush of water into the cellular compartment is detrimental to the cell. Okay, my opinion, as a wise man once said, this definitely ain't not nothing. That review is eye-opening as it speaks of how osmotic stress can lead to straight up disorder, noting things like DNA damage and the lead up to cell death. But the osmotic stress they're talking about is when water is exiting the cell, which we'll go over next, but it's kind of like pick your poison. Either you're overhydrated or underhydrated. Neither of the two is good, which is why I had you guys in mind when I reached out to Element. They formulated an electrolyte mix that I've been using for two years now, and I'm proud to say, that I've been worry-free about my hydration ever since. Prior to Element, I was really trying to figure out this hydration thing because I, I knew it could upgrade my health. So I was pleasantly surprised when I came across them because not only did they do the research, but they're proud about it. Like you can check the link in my description. It'll take you to their website and you can go to the science tab where they talk everything hydration. They didn't just throw some sodium, some sugar, and some other dodgy ingredients in the pack and start selling out the back door. In fact, there's no sugar at all just straight up electrolytes. Electrolytes you just learned about, and I'm pretty confident in them for that reason. Not to mention, you're gonna love how salty it actually tastes. You just know you're getting the good stuff. So I'm super happy they decided to hook you guys up. The link in my description is the only way to take advantage of the free sample pack that you'll be able to get with any purchase. And with that, you'll be able to test all the flavors and choose which one is best for you. I personally like the chocolate flavor, now I know. Chocolate sauce sounds crazy, but for those of you that had Element before, then you know, and if you actually are on the Element train already, this offer is available to you too. Drinkelement.com slash no lab code required, which is below in the description, is the only way to take advantage of this gift offer. And if you don't like it for any reason, you can literally get your money back, keep the product, no questions asked. Get with the worry-free hydration, y'all. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video. Ocean water is extremely high in sodium. This is not an ocean, this is a lake by my house. And this camera angle sucks, give me a sec. <laughs>
This angle isn't, you know, a thousand times better, but if I step over even a little bit more, I'm in that water. And that water's gross. We may get a parts per million reading of a couple hundred at most if we shake the salt shaker in some water, but the ocean itself is known to have a PPM reading of 35,000. So if we chug some of that ocean water, which we know is high in sodium, then that sodium is going to hang out in the extracellular fluid and the intracellular water is going to say, whoa, it's way more concentrated out there with solute. Let's go rush over and spread that out. Water then leaves that intracellular fluid and quite literally shrinks the cell and dehydrates it. Shout out to Science Spy for capturing this as well. You can actually see the cell shrivel up as they lose water. This is called cellular crenation. Now what we're looking at here is when you place a cell into salty water. This is taking place inside of a lab. Now it's a little less chaotic and dramatic when happening inside the body because cells can produce these things called osmolites which actually act as intracellular solute in an attempt to try to keep water from leaving the cell. It's fascinating stuff man. It's like if there was a jail breakout and they release all the guards and they say try to stop as many prisoners from leaving as you can. That's what these osmolites are in charge of. But by the end of the day any osmolite or any other compensatory action or even the kidney itself can only do so much because everything must yield to the law of water so peaceful so many dragonflies and garbage okay let's get out of here now of course none of us are actually walking around with bottles of ocean water the more likely occurrence is that there's just a lack of new water right aka just not drinking you see we lose water when we're peeing pooping we sweat we lose water when we breathe as well so we're losing water 24 7 and when we're not drinking extracellular solutes actually rise in their concentration and as we know this pulls water from the cells and we run into the same problem of our cells dehydrating so let's make this make sense what are we actually talking about when we say dehydrated cells. We're talking about the cells that make up tissue. For example, muscle is tissue. Our muscle cells can literally shrink and potentially start to malfunction. This could be the origin of some of those cramps that we get. Now, there's a little bit more nuance and stuff to explore there, but uh, that's a whole nother video. But this is this is everything though. This is what hydration is. You see, when we drink water, we aren't just filling up our tank. Uh, water compartmentalizes itself inside the body. The heart, the lungs, the brain, the liver, and yes, even that pancreas we talked about, these are all organs that are holding the cells that are holding that intracellular water that can quite literally shrink due to dehydration, and these organs can start to operate at a fraction of their potential. Now, as with all things, this isn't happening in a vacuum, right? This isn't the only thing going on. When the body senses an extracellular rise of solute concentration, the kidneys get involved and say like, hey, yo, we can't be peeing out extra free water. We ain't got none in here. And on the flip side of that, if there's too much purified water running around in the body, then we're peeing like crazy. The kidneys are like, way too much water, let it out. Don't forget to go below and snag some of that element up for yourself. They have literally solved the electrolyte puzzle and we haven't even touched on some of the things that electrolytes are important for. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'm gonna get a bacha away. <laughs> My microphone won't stretch behind the tree. I'm trying to hide. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's let's uh let's go home.